Hi everybody, I'm Zlatan Djenic, I'm a Senior Solutions Architect for Amazon Web Services. In this video I'm going to show you how to build .NET applications using Amazon Recognition. Let's get to it! Here in Amazon we have a very long heritage with machine learning. Um, starting off with our Amazon.com personalized recommenda recommendations, um, as well as our fulfillment automation and in inventory management in our fulfillment centers. Um, if you actually take a look at those awesome videos, you'll see um, um, you know, our robots uh, going around and you know uh, adjusting and delivering and uh, um, stacking all these uh, uh, different um, packages in our fulfillment centers uh, using our uh, machine learning models to do so. Of course, there's drones and Amazon Prime Air with our drone delivery system using just as well using uh, machine learning. And then there's uh, Amazon Alexa, uh, not only used for full home automation, um, for um, kids um, actually using it, um, um, everything from learning um, to uh, building out um, uh, bots and, uh, and different artificial intelligence um, skills for Alexa. Um, and then there's, of course, Amazon Go, our uh, brand new grocery shop um, customer experience that is completely without any people in it. You just go in, you take what you want, um, you take it out and we charge you for it and the whole thing. Of course, we're using Amazon machine learning models to um, continuously monitor and ensure that everything is as it should be. So if you look at our machine learning stack, um, we have uh, services like Recognition, the one we're going to be talking about today. Recognition Video, Poly, uh, Transcribe, Translate, Comprehend, and Lex. Lex being our Alexa service, in fact. Um, and then we have platforms like Amazon SageMaker, which effectively simplifies building out everything from, um, you know, from the actual algorithms down to uh, uh, creating models to uh, training those models and then deploying these things in um, you know, any type of environment uh, for any of the services to consume it. Um, we also have Amazon Mechanical Turk, um, which actually um, gives access to um, to many, many, many hundreds of people um, um, throughout the world um, to actually um, annotate and, um, and, and do um, you know, simple kind of classifications of data uh, and that way um, you know, prevent any type of bias that might be introduced in the data that is used uh, for machine learning models. And then there's of course a number of frameworks uh, that we support and use uh, for building machine learning models such as Cafe2, uh, Microsoft CNTK, uh, Mixnet, um, first and foremost, uh, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, a very popular one, the one that we are using continuously, uh, Keras and Gluon as our, our kind of integration and API services with these frameworks. So, recognition. What does it really address? It's the computer vision, right? So uh, this is a very good example of an autonomous driving system um, uh, by one of our customers, Too Simple, um, using actually Mixnet um, a learning model um, to detect um, everything that the car sees and react based upon it, right? Whether it's people, whether it's other cars, and whether, you know, whether it's the environment around it or you know traffic signals and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, we do have um, Amazon Recognition, which is actually a pre-trained service. So this is an example of, you know, where you don't have to worry about building everything from ground up uh, when it comes to, um, you know, learning models, machine learning models, uh, and all that. We provide you with pre-trained models and a service that is ready for you to consume service that is already, you know, um, auto-scaled, already resilient, already available, nothing for you to worry about, just consume it. So what does it do? It does object and scene detection, it does facial analysis, face search and match. Um, it can do things like unsafe image detection, um, celebrity recognition, and then uh, obviously different texts uh, text in images, as well as recognizing the type of language um, that is in those texts. Um, one of the biggest examples is um, our um, work with law enforcement 
uh, agencies and uh, different local government officials on actually doing facial recognition on uh, through CCTV cameras and uh, different types of cameras throughout for very quick uh, recognition of potential suspects and uh, which ensures um, quick apprehension and obviously a lot more safety uh, for us, the citizens um, and everybody else. How can we apply these powerful capabilities to video? Well, one of the things when it comes to actual uh, Im image and vision recognition is that dealing with still images, it lacks the context. Context such as temporal information uh, that is lost and motion context that is lost. Um, slow and um, error prone um, you know, analysis and um, interpretation of results. And it's fairly expensive. Uh, but with Amazon recognition video, um, we can go one step further. We can actually um, do object detection, face recognition, and content moderation, as well as celebrity recognition. But this way, actually, um, with a context and temporal time information on you know, how people behaved and what they did prior to what has been detected, and so to put a better context into the whole thing. Now let me show you a demo how to take advantage as a .NET Core developer of Amazon recognition um, in a sample Lambda application. We're gonna go step by step. Um, can't wait to get right into it. So let's take a look at my um, Amazon workspace here where my um, Windows uh, Visual Studio environment is. So uh, this is my Visual Studio. Uh, and as you can see, if you actually downloaded um, AWS uh, Toolkit for Visual Studio, um, your Visual Studio is probably going to look very similar to mine. You're going to have here uh, this AWS Explorer uh, with the profile and the regions and all the services here. There's quite a bit that you can do, which is pretty awesome. But we're going to go ahead and create this application. We're going to start with a new project. And once again, um, if you had uh, installed uh, the AWS Toolkit, for, a, uh, for Visual Studio specifically, you will have this option of uh, Lambda Project.NET Core. So we're gonna go ahead and select this. Uh, you can see it kind of gives me his automatic name, so I'll just uh, extend it here, call it recognition. And, and as you can see, I have an option of choosing uh, different uh, types of blueprints, um, so we tr actually try to help you out quite a bit um, with um, you know, pre-creating some of the code with some of our samples. Um, and as it happens, so we do have this detect image labels one uh, specifically for the use uh, with Amazon recognition service. So we're gonna go ahead and select that guy and press finish. So what's happening now, it's actually creating a solution and a project for us um, with um, our specific dependencies. Um, as you can see, the NuGet packages and uh, with our function that is now pre-provisioned in this case. So a couple of things, as you can see, um, you know, this is a particular sample uses .NET Core 1.0. Uh, my project, in fact, in the properties is pointing to the right uh, target framework, and it is. This is awesome. Um, we can actually leave it as such. Uh, we can um, go ahead and build it, make sure everything is fine. Um, and then if we actually look at uh, um, the actual um, function over here, rather, just click on the right thing. Uh, a couple of things that we can see. So, so now that we're pointing to the right assembly, um, let's open up a function. Let's see what we got inside. So first things first, um, if you look at this uh, Lambda serializer here that we have, so by default Lambda accepts only input parameters and returns types um, of type system IO stream. To use type classes for input parameters and return types, you have to register a serializer, which is what we're doing right here. So uh, this assembly attribute is registering the uh, Lambda JSON serializer, which uses Newtonsoft.json to convert the streams to type classes. You can then set the serializer um, at the assembly or the method level if you want to. So if you look at the actual class over here, it has two constructors. The first is a default constructor that is used when Lambda invokes your function. The constructor creates the S3 and recognition service clients and then gets the AWS credentials for these clients from the IAM role that you assign to the function when you deploy it. So the AWS region for the clients 
is set to the region your Lambda function is already running in. Um, and in this blueprint, you will want to add tags to the S3 object in the recognition service um, and that has minimum level of confidence uh, set and which is going to be set to around uh, 60. Um, so the constructor checks the environment whether the variable min confidence to determine the acceptable confidence level has been set and then you can set this, um, you know, you can actually set this whole environment variable when you deploy um, the service itself. So um, you can then uh, use the second constructor um, over here, let's scroll down to it, um, to, uh, for actual testing. Um, the, the test project configures its own S3 and recognition clients and passes them in, right? So this is what we have over there. So the function handler method, which is here at the bottom, um, is the method that Lambda calls when it constructs the instance. Notice that the input parameter is the type of uh, S3 event and not stream. You can do this because of the registered Lambda uh, JSON serializer early on. Um, the S3 event contains all the information about the event triggered in S3. Um, the function then loops through all the S3 objects that were part of the event and then tells recognition to detect labels. After the late labels are detected, they are then added as tags to the S3 object itself. So, yeah, we can um, open also this uh, um, AWS Lambda Tools default JSON. And you can see basically all the, um, you know, all the different uh, uh, settings that we have set over here. Um, it says which actually profile we're going to be using. Um, in this case, it's the uh, default profile, um, you know, with uh, credentials that are provided uh, when I actually set up AWS Tools for Visual Studio. Uh, and then uh, what, is the, what is the region, um, what configuration we're going to be using, and then uh, what is the framework, uh, target framework, and so on and so forth. Um, so we want to make sure that we actually rebuild this guy, and uh, we're pointing it to the right framework and to the right function. So now that if we are actually fairly happy with the whole thing, we're gonna, we want to make sure just one more time and that, uh, that we are doing the right output. Uh, what our build event is actually using, .NET Core 1, um, packages, debug resources. So I think we're actually good to go. And then uh, we can actually right click on the Lambda itself. And um, we can say publish this to AWS Lambda. And as you can see here, we have uh, language runtime .NET Core version 1.0 actually selected. Um, we can actually now give this uh, uh, function a name. So it's test recognition function. Um, and it's pointing to the um, right framework. Um, we do have the right uh, uh, assembly name and make sure that you have the right function, uh, or the right method name uh, for the handler itself. Uh, otherwise, you might have a mismatch there. So we're going to go to the next one, see what waits for us over here. So over here, we can actually select an existing role or we can go ahead and create a new role. And uh, we can select on which type of access we want. Um, in this case, to make things easier, we're going to select AWS Lambda full access uh, to S3, Dynamo, and a whole bunch of other things. And um, one thing pretty important that you might remember from before is that we need to also add an environment variable called min confidence. And we're going to put the value of 60 as a minimum confidence and because we, we kind of want uh, you know, anything that is less confident than 60% to be ignored in this case. Um, so now we're going to be, and we don't need to select uh, VPC subnets and security groups. This is in a case that we are actually doing VPC deployment itself. Um, so we're going to go here and say upload. So you'll see that it's actually telling us everything that it's doing right now, how it's actually uh, creating a, a IAM rule that the Lambda is, uh, is going to use uh, as part of its execution policy. And then it's going to actually build the whole package and then uh, publish it to Lambda. 
So you can see uh, it's telling me that the file has been changed externally, has not saved changes. So I'll say yes to all, I'm gonna save this stuff. So as you see, uh, the function has been successfully deployed. Um, and now we can actually go ahead and configure a whole bunch of things for the function itself. Uh, we can test the function uh, by actually uh, you know, using either example requests or creating one of our own. Uh, or we can actually, and there's a whole bunch of them as you can see, it's just pretty awesome, um, all for specific services. Um, but most importantly, we want to actually add uh, uh, an event source, which may basically means that we're going to uh, hook into an event of um, images being uploaded to a specific bucket. Um, so I've uh, pre-created a bucket prior uh, to starting this demo, um, and I'm going to now add uh, to that bucket. Here we go. So it says source type, and the bucket is starting with my name is Latin recognition test bucket. And here you can actually um, say what the suffix and the prefix would be so that you can kind of filter out uh, for, you know, um, uploads to specific folders in the bucket itself. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. Um, we, all we need to do is just um, upload any image with a label um, and um, you can actually test it and see how it um, creates um, or rather recognizes uh, different labels and then puts those labels into the actual properties uh, of that image. Um, so where do you find those uh, properties? Uh, let me actually go, show, go ahead and show you. So if I double click on the, on the bucket where we created, you can see that I, uh, before this, I've uploaded an image. Um, it's not gonna have any tags, but I can show you where the tags will be and they, you will actually find them here. So if you click on the properties of an image and you go to the uh, tags tab, you will see all the tags come through here. So go ahead, upload your images and see what you get. Great, we just covered how to build .NET applications using Amazon recognition. I hope you can take advantage of it. Thank you for watching.